What's up, everybody? It's your boy, Season. So, uh, today, this is a, uh, kind of like a vlog video. I actually haven't been uh, shooting any videos in the last two weeks because I've actually been in Japan. Uh, so, I actually just recently came back uh, to the United States. And so, this is kind of a video about a lot of the shopping experiences that I had in some of the places that I went. So, let's not waste any more time. So, let's go. So first things first, uh, the first place that we hit up uh, was the Gundam base in Odaiba. And uh, that's where the Unicorn Gundam is. And so this was actually the first place we hit. As soon as we uh, got landed, we pretty much hit the ground running. And in this store, like they have like a lot of the the normal kits. This is where you can find a lot of the normal kits. They do have like Gundam base exclusives and things like that. And you'll kind of see some of that as we go through uh, some of this video. But uh, what I was actually looking for, I was actually looking to see what they had with Gundam Seed Freedom. I wanted to see if they had really any product that was out yet. And for the most part, they didn't. Uh, so they had a couple of things. They had like, you know, the poop movie posters and stuff, and they had the trailers uh, playing nonstop, uh, not at this store, but at the Tamashi Nation store. And so uh, we'll actually get into that a little later. Um, but this, of course, is always a interesting thing to see. Uh, it's interesting for the perspective of somebody from the United States where, you know, a lot of this Gundam stuff, whether it's regular kids or P Bandai or whatever, a lot of that stuff tends to be uh, very difficult to get. Um, and, you know, we usually do pay a, a decent markup uh, for kits just because of shipping and all of that stuff, or so they say. And, uh, you know, so it is kind of overwhelming, especially if you've never been here before. Um, to see all of this Gundam at your fingertips to where you can pretty much get uh, your hands on most kits. There was actually a couple of kits I could not find, um, but right now it looks like for Gundam in general, they're gearing up mainly for the Witch of Mercury and the Gundam Seed Freedom movie. Unfortunately, they didn't have anything for Gundam Seed Freedom, uh, but Witch of Mercury, they had pretty much all of the the high grades and stuff like that. So, you know, here they're actually... I'm actually taking a look at the Gundam Seed uh, uh, part that they had in there. And uh, I actually wanted those cups that were right there. <laughs> but unfortunately, uh, I wasn't able to get them. Uh, I could have got them at this other store, but uh, that's a long story. I'll get to that when I get there. Uh, but they did have some new stuff for the Gundam uh, Build Fighters. Uh, that new three-part uh, episode uh, series that they just released, uh, you know, so they did have some of that. As you can see, they had a lot of stuff that was sold out, as you see on the screen here. And that's what I actually noticed the first couple of days that I was there. I was actually kind of disappointed in the fact that I didn't really think that they had a ton of, of product, um, not a ton of new stuff. Um, they had a decent amount of old stuff, but compared to what I saw the first time I went in 2018, they had, it seemed like they had everything. And in this one, they didn't really have as much as I was expecting. Now, I don't know if that has to do with, you know, the pandemic in 2020 and all of that kind of stuff. And as far as them uh, ramping up production and stuff, I just didn't see it personally. Um, but don't get me wrong. When I say that, I'm not acting like they didn't have anything there. Trust me, they had plenty. It was just that... Uh, I saw it back in 2018 and actually I still have video of, of uh, the first time that I went in 2018 and if I compare that video to this video uh, you would see that there was a ton more product uh, in 2018 than there is in 2023 and I actually do believe that uh, COVID has something to do with it um, but you know I can't prove that that's just a uh, a hunch that I have <laughs> but uh, yeah so we've got that going on here and then they you know the one thing about it also um, compared to buying stuff in the states in the states you know we're going off of pretty much just pictures we don't really get a chance to really see it or touch it you're kind of just going off of pr uh, promo pictures which is why those things are so important 
uh, to us that don't live in Japan. But in Japan, they have all that stuff out for you to uh, to display and to see. So you can see master grades. As you can see here, this is all the master grades and stuff here. And uh, in my <laughs> my friend, when I was taking this video, he was actually because he's a big uh, turn a Gundam fan for whatever reason and uh, so he was telling me about that <laughs> that he saw it uh, but yeah so um, you know it's it is interesting uh, being an American uh, Gunpla builder or you know a Gundam collector you know we don't really get a chance to see this stuff uh, with our own two eyes before we build it or before we buy it so um, I do appreciate the fact that they don't have that problem in Japan and I kind of wish we didn't have that problem here in the states but unfortunately there's just you know there's no getting around it um you know when it comes to gundam in japan and i don't know if people uh that live in the united states understand this gundam pretty much is everywhere like any place where like either toys are sold or models are sold for the most part you're gonna find some gundam there i mean i even found uh some gundam at uh Don Quixote. I mean, they even had some Witch of Mercury kits, which I was quite surprised to see. Uh, you know, so it's pretty much everywhere. Like a lot of these stores, like Gundam Base or Tamashi Nations, those are kind of like specialty stores, and it's a place where you can kind of go and see like the showcase of new Gundam. That's what I, I've, uh, that's what I've kind of grasped from um, the places that I went, because especially once we get to Tamashi Nations and all that. And in this shot here, I'm actually taking a look at all the P Bandai releases for the Gundam F90. I actually did not realize that there was that many. <laughs> I knew that there was a, a lot, but I did not realize it was that much. And uh, but anyway, yeah, like and also with the F90, the F90 is small. You know, that's the thing about the F90 and the F91. Those things are tiny. They pretty much just look like a high grade, but they are a master grade. So, you know, that's qu uh, quite interesting there so what else do we got here all right so here we actually have uh these are kind of some of the old master grades they had some of the gundam blaze exclusives that was what that neon black one was down there now in this shot i actually had to move kind of fast because in this uh uh in this store there's a lot of people there and there's a lot more room in this store than there is in some of the other stores but you know i know in japan they're very um, they're very picky about, you know, not having people's faces shown on camera if you don't get their permission and stuff. So especially if there's a lot of people there, you know, I tried my best not to record them or anything like that. And so I kind of was kind of skipping past this part here. But a lot of this had a lot of the UC stuff. Um, so but anyway, like they did have a ton of there. There's also a ton of Forbidden Freedoms there. I saw Forbidden Freedoms everywhere. I know in the the U.S. they I've been told that it's kind of difficult to get your hands on, but in Japan, I mean, it's pretty much everywhere. So the, I saw it pretty much at every store that sold anything from Gundam Seed. So, uh, so now here we're at the Tamashi Nations, right? And at the Tamashi Nations, this is pretty much um, this is where the Gundam Cafe was, right by the Akihabara Station. Uh, the JR station. We were actually, uh, we actually, our hotel was actually uh, right there. It's like a two minute walk. And so um, it was interesting to see this stuff and um, to see these uh, metal robots. And I didn't realize they were so small. I know, I kind of always, you know, like I knew that they were one by 144, but it, it was kind of weird to see them because they really are just like really detailed like high grades <laughs> but you do see like some of the advanced uh, of zeta stuff there so that's some of the new stuff and of course I, I don't know if they had anything where you could actually pre-order it but it's kind of just like a showcase store so where you can kind of see all the new product that's going to come out they did sell stuff um like they had the metal build uh strike in there and some other stuff and there's the display for some of the metal builds that they had in there uh, but yeah, they didn't have a ton of product for sale that I saw. Uh, so here, what's in this case? Oh, so in this case, of course, they had the, the VF1S. That's that uh, clear one. And then that is the sparkle of the freedom there. And with that one, it actually reminded me of the titanium uh, master grades that used to come out. So that's the kind of finish that it has. I don't know if it actually shows very well in this picture but that's pretty much what it reminded me of as the titanium master grades 
And then, of course, last but not least, I took a look at the Rising Freedom and the Immortal Justice. And uh, it it looks solid. Um, I would be very surprised if they did not do a uh, metal build for the Rising Freedom, at least. Uh, we haven't even gotten the Infinite Justice yet for the metal build line, but... Um, I, yeah, I would be really surprised if they didn't do one for the, um, for the Rising Freedom. So here, this is actually Ami Ami, and this is actually in, uh, uh, was it Radio Kai Con, I think? I think that's what it's called. And so I was doing a lot of uh, shopping in here. Now, the thing about here, I didn't actually shoot that much video in here just because it was so tight in there. And there was tons of people around. So it was very difficult to shoot any kind of video in here. But they did have quite a bit of Gundam and Super Robot. So you see some Gravion stuff there. And I actually got a chance to take a look at the Power and Fire Dagwon and with my own two eyes and it was very interesting it has the same finish kind of as the final dan Kuga that came out in 2020 and i couldn't see take a good shot of the back just because of there are so many people in there and they had the back covered so i couldn't really get a good shot of it and here uh this is actually at the brave uh, exhibit that was in sunshine city and when i got there it, you know it was it took me a while to get there and it was just kind of like a, you know, just a display kind of set. Now, the thing was like that little display case that I showed, that was really the only thing that they would let you record. They wouldn't let you record pretty much anything else in there. And most of it was just like pictures and stuff. And of course, since I can't read Japanese, I couldn't really understand what they were saying over there. But, you know, it was still cool to look at. Now, what I was disappointed in, they didn't really have a lot of product to sell. They didn't really have hardly anything. I was at least I was at least looking for the acrylic stands. And trust me, the acrylic stands in Japan are everywhere. But for Brave, they didn't really have any. I guess they had already sold out. Because this one was actually, this exhibit was about to end. I think it's this week or next week um, when it's over. And so most of the product had already been ran through. So there, unfortunately, there wasn't much for me to buy there. But it was still awesome to see. So, you know, it's always good to see that. And uh, hopefully I'll be able to get those acrylic stands someplace else. <laughs> so, yeah, so that was a, that was a pretty interesting sight to see. But yeah, unfortunately, it was disappointing overall, but I still went. So uh, just to see Brave, because you guys know that I love Brave. So, all right. So what do we got next here? So now we actually went to Yokohama. And so we went to Yokohama to see the moving RX-78. And as far as product is, they had some product there and they had like a little museum thing. I actually did take pictures of that, but I'm not, I'm not putting that in this video. Um, as far as the product, this is another one where it's been out for quite a while. And a lot of those exclusive kits, even though they still had some there, there wasn't that much to pick from. Uh, you know, they had like some bags and they had some keychains and they had uh, like a one by 60 version of this. Uh, and you know, it was pretty cool to see, but unfortunately there wasn't anything that I wanted to buy. Um, I think I got like a mug there and, uh, I got like this, they had this thing where you could like, uh, buy popcorn and stuff. And so it had like a Gundam, like little holder for your popcorn. And I bought that, but unfortunately that was pretty much it, but we did actually go to the top. I didn't put that, uh, video in this, uh, actual, um, video, but, uh, we did see it, so it was actually cool to see. All right, now this one is actually my honorable mention. <laughs> and this is Yodobashi Camera. And this is the one in Akihabara. Like I said, we were actually at a hotel right by the uh, by the JR uh, rail station. And so this was literally like a three minute, four minute walk from our hotel. And let me tell you, this place had everything. It had it, think of like a Best Buy and a hobby store with restaurants mixed all together. It was like nine or ten floors of everything. Like and every floor had a theme. So one floor was all like cell phones and iPads and stuff like that. And then one was just washer and dryers and stuff like that. One was just TVs. And then the other one was just models and stuff like that. And so... Uh, I just kind of took this was kind of my honorable mention. I actually went here probably, I don't know, probably at least 
six or seven times during my entire stay. I almost it seems like I went almost every day and it was just an amazing store to be in. Uh, also, a lot of these stores were tax free, especially in Akihabara. Um, you know, if you show them your U.S. passport, um, usually they will give you the discount to where you do not have to pay the 10 percent tax that they have to pay. So um, that's always cool. And, you know, they had video games there, a lot of PlayStation stuff, and you can still get Gundams here. Now, this place actually had a lot of stuff for modelers. So um, if you're looking for any kind of like uh, nippers or anything like that, they had a lot of that stuff in here. Um, they had a lot of high grades, not as many master grades, but a lot of high grades. I actually did see the Mike gun and I was actually going to try to get it, uh, but I think that they were sold out. And they ended up taking that down a day later uh, when I went back. So, uh, but yeah, so they had a lot of stuff in here, a lot of stuff from Kota Bikia, a lot of stuff from Tamiya and things of that nature. Now, this place was actually also in uh, Radio uh, Kaikon, I think is what it's called. But I can't remember what this store was called, but this was the first place where they had a lot of metal builds that I actually liked, but they were pricey. Uh, so, but there was another store that they really had. And this is to me, was the best Gundam store I saw there. And this was, it's in the same building, but it's like to the left. There's like an arcade at the bottom. And this was actually on the eighth floor. And I actually went in this building before and I didn't see it. Uh, but I actually got online and I was asking people if they knew where I could get metal builds. And somebody at, on one of the Facebook groups I'm in, they recommended this store. And shout out to them because this place was amazing by far. Out of all the Gundam stores that I went to, this was the best one. It had almost everything. So it had perfect grades in there. It had metal builds in there. It had high grades in there. It had P Bandai stuff in there. It had all of the little Gashupon winner things in there. It had absolutely everything. And the thing is, the store is not really that big. Um, but they were able to carry a lot of stuff and I was very very impressed and the thing is I almost missed this store um, as far as the pricing was concerned most of it was pretty reasonable especially when you start getting to the metal builds and stuff you are gonna have to pay a little bit more than like you know what they originally came out with as a pre-order but um, they were still reasonable and a lot of the uh, accessory packs or the striker packs that you're missing I found most of the ones that I was missing here and they were still reasonably priced. I think I got uh, some for like 60 bucks. I think I got the Wing of Light set that I was missing for my uh, uh, for my Metal Build Strike Freedom. I got that for like 90 bucks. So, you know, it was really, really cool. These are all the Gachupons ones. Now, I actually went in here and I actually tried to grab all of those and I was because I was going to buy them. And when I went to the counter, uh, the guy was like, no, you actually have to win these. And I was like, oh, man, because I actually finally found a Gundam keychain that I really wanted. And it took me forever to find it. And then I found out I could I actually had to try to win it. And I was like, oh, so <laughs> but as you see, they have a ton, ton of UC stuff. They had a ton of uh, they had a, a pretty good selection of P Bandai as well. Um, they had a lot of the Verkaz, as you see, the Sazabi up there. And, you know, now the one thing that I was really looking for, I was looking for a master grade turn A and I actually did not find one after all the stores that I went to, I could not find it. So that was kind of disappointing, but it's really a just a present. It ain't really for me anyway. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so you had all of these. Now, this was actually one of the only stores that I ran into that actually had both the um uh, the metal structure, uh, new and Sazabi. This was the only store that I said that I uh, ran into that I actually found both. And considering, you know, how expensive those things are online, it was actually still rel relatively uh, uh, priced fairly. Um, I think that I didn't look at the price of the Sazabi, but the uh, the new was like twenty five hundred bucks, and on you know that's on, that's pretty much what they're going for on the street. Actually, I think they're going for a little bit more than that. But they actually had both of them, and they had the um, the add on set, so they had a, the double fin funnels, and they had all of that stuff in there. So um, I was really really impressed with the amount of uh, 
Gundam stuff that they had in there. So uh, I really liked seeing that. Now, I actually considered actually getting the metal structure, but to try to get it back home would have been a hassle. And uh, I may talk about that in another one of my other videos. If you guys end up liking this video, what I'll do is I'll probably talk about just my overall impressions about doing a lot of Gundam or you know shopping in Japan and kind of the pros and cons of it. And there's a lot of pros, but there are some cons. Um, you know, trying to get all your stuff home can be definitely a hassle. So, uh, but yeah, so that was interesting to see. And as you can see, there's the uh, metal structure new there and with the fin funnel system there. And, uh, you know, it was uh, pretty good. And that, that was the only place that I found it where it was actually on display. I think I did see the Sazabi someplace else, but I can't really remember where it was because I went to so many stores. I mean, we were we were pounding the pavement, as they say. So <laughs> unfortunately, uh, that's how that was. But yeah, so yeah, that. And then what we're going to do, as you see, you see the, they got some uh, P Bandai there. They were blasting Gundam music. So everybody in there was singing and all this kind of stuff. It was a it was a fun atmosphere. I would say out of all the stores that I went to, this was probably the funnest place to be. And I really wanted to buy almost everything in the store. It, it was it was a crazy, crazy, crazy place. So but I definitely do recommend it. All right, and then of course this was the actual uh, spot where they had all the metal builds. They pretty much had just about every one that you can imagine. Um, like I said, they were priced decently. Um, like that Strike Rouge there, that one was like maybe like two hundred. Uh, some of them were uh, new. Some of them had never been opened. Some of them um, were open, but usually like the Japanese usually take care of their stuff that's why i don't have any problem buying used items there but yeah they pretty much had everything some of the tamashi exclusive so they had the strike noir in there they had the uh gundam double o riser one in there they had some of the metal composites so yeah they had quite a bit and uh i was really really impressed with that place um and like i said it is in that same building as the radio kai Con. And uh, it's off to the left. And like I said, there's an arcade at the bottom. And then what you have to do is you have to go kind of like behind the arcade. And there is an elevator that will take you up to the eighth floor. And I actually don't know what that actual spot is called. I knew I took a picture of it somewhere. Uh, what the name of that store was. But yeah, it was actually really, really good. So uh, that's what I have for you today. It was a very, very interesting trip. Um, so actually I probably in the next video I'll probably take you through some of my actual hauls as far as the stuff that I actually did buy um, And then I'll kind of get into like some of the pros and cons that I ran into as far as buying this stuff and trying to get some of this stuff back to America uh, So we'll talk about that uh, but Thank you guys for watching the video. I actually hope this helps for uh, other people that are maybe thinking about going to Japan. Pretty much just stay in Akihabara. You'll pretty much find everything you need there. Of course, there are some like mom and pop spots and there are way more spots than I actually uh, talked about in this video. But since this was most of these were right by my hotel outside of like the Yokohama one and and uh, the Otaibo one. But most of these were roughly within walking distance of about 10 minutes from actually where we were actually staying. Uh, but yeah, if you guys actually want to hear about like where I was staying and, you know, how I got around and all that, I can do a video on that as well. But uh, anyway, so thank you guys for watching the video and I'll catch you in the next one. Peace.